Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, we've got a lot of missions headed over to Duna, and so we need to get those all figured out and see if they work. So, and one of them is a man mission, of course, and so that will be the last one to be uh, fully taken care of. But uh, first we've got the mid-course plane changes, and I've already jotted down the timing of those. So, a uh, nice slow reaction will power thanks to the probe part. So, actually it's probably an inclination change, so we need to go in this direction. I got a lot of suggestions for how to uh, make the make the first stage recovery work out, and they were good suggestions, but of course since we've got these missions underway, we uh, can't uh, deal with those right now. And uh, But I will look forward to trying some of that out once we can do more testing in that area. But uh, once you've launched something, uh, you know, four things, you need to actually get that mission taken care of, as we will now. So, uh, this is in 12 days. Well, that's strange. I didn't expect to be a 23 meter per second burn, and uh, I thought I'd been pointing in the right direction, but evidently it didn't wander with it. What has happened? Okay, that's all fixed up, and now the maneuver node is in a totally different place with a totally different burn. This is not very good. Okay, that seems like as close as we're going to get. It's a little bit fidgety right now. So yeah, we'll leave it there. Okay, so that's that mission. The next mission on my list is the actual manned mission. So let's uh, see now, where are you? Oh, there you are. Totally different trajectory. All right, let's uh, switch to that. Okay, so this one, uh, this one is interesting because, yeah, it's got all the fuel out here. But anyway, we won't need all of that. Let's make sure that the maneuver no node looks all right. Okay, this one uh, is still good after some time warping. Let's go. Okay, that's pretty good, about 289 kilometers. So this one is all nice and configured with Milner Kerman, looking good. Next is a science lander. Costs a lot more than I thought it would. This has been pretty deceptive. I thought we were getting them in with uh, 6 to 12 meters per second on the mid-course plane change, but now it's turned out to be much more than that. I think the game the game just wants you to keep playing and then, then it penalizes you randomly when you don't. Okay, uh, 14 days. Okay, that's pretty much the tightest we've gotten it. And the last one. For this one I think we can just use monopropellant. All right, 266 kilometers is fine. All right, so now we have to bounce to the tracking station to see when these actually come in, and then we can figure out the order of operations there. Okay, so it turns out the order of operations is the um, fuel extension on the OV-6A first, then the science lander, then the fuel extension on the OV-6, and then the manned mission. And so, uh, different from the mid-course plane changes. So here with the ov uh, six fuel extension and we're gonna take it in okay our Duna periapsis is a little bit high and also somewhat inclined we'll use uh, RCS to fix that okay that should be just fine 56 wow huh I didn't think it'd be that much from all the way out here Maybe we'll have to actually use the fuel. That's annoying.
In a pinch, we'll have to temporarily leave this stuff as space junk. Oh, there it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This way. Okay, so. Um, hmm. But. There will be all right. Let me uh, quickly check error breaking calculator to make sure. Okay, error breaking calculator wants me around uh, ten thousand five hundred to ten thousand seven hundred. That may actually lower than that if I want a tighter orbit. Uh, but we'll get closer before doing that RCS burn to fix it. Nothing else is getting uh, close to Duna in the time being. Hopefully that's reasonably equatorial. Looks like it. I mean, we're going to encounter Ike and everything. So... That might be a little bit too tight. Let's say right around there. 10,500-ish. A uh, little bit of an inclination there. But we'll just have to deal with that. Re remember, we have to be able to rendezvous with our missions, so... It's a little bit tricky. Duna, the red planet. It's actually far more red than Mars is. Uh, Mars always struck me as a little bit more orange. Now all of our missions uh, come in at different uh, on different orbits so the air breaking altitude will not be the same for all of them. The manned mission is coming on a very slow approach which means that its air breaking altitude will be actually higher than this. This will have the lowest lowest of the air breaking passes. Okay, how are we doing? Yeah, we're gonna have a bit of an inclination. Okay, we've passed our periapsis. Lots of inclination, in fact. Ah, Ike. So let's actually uh, set target for Ike to see our inclination at uh, 12 degrees. question is, should we just leave it like that? I guess we'll only fix the inclination once we get the other mission in. Because otherwise it won't be accurate anyway. Okay, let's wait on that. Okay, so we're just lifting up our orbit so that we don't end up crashing into Duna. So stable orbit, that should be good enough. Okay, so that's a stable orbit, and I'm not going to fix anything until I see how our other missions come in. The next one up is that science lander there. So let's uh, well, let's just uh, scroll out of here. Maybe we can... Yeah, alright, we'll switch directly to it. Okay, science lander. Yay. Alright. So it's going to be the one that pairs up with that uh, fuel tank. It's currently coming in. It's already got a very good uh, entry. So I'll just need a plane change. So here we go. Wow, boy it does it need a plane change. Uh, it's coming in uh, south to north here. Precisely what we don't want to see. Okay, we better take that while it's still a possible maneuver node, otherwise it's going to take it away from me and I'm going to have to replot again. 
Let's find this maneuver node. Okay. Let's see enough of that. Okay, 13.7 kilometers right now. Let's see now. We can target our other mission to see what the inclination difference is. Well, maybe. We're not really in orbit yet. Okay, I thought we would be able to target our mission. Uh, not Ike. Close, but not quite. Uh, it's not letting me target the other mission. Um, how about if we focus on Duna? Yeah, okay, there we go. No, not letting me see the inclination difference, but you can see we're coming in pretty equatorially and that other mission did not. So, going to be a little bit challenging there. Um, maybe we should try and just fix it up from out here and go with an inclination instead of uh, having that difference. No... Well, that sure looks like a lot closer than a lot closer than it was before. Let's see. Yeah, that that, that, that looks good. Okay, so that that's what we'll go for. Just three meters per second, right out from out here. It'll save us some trouble. And we'll use... no, we don't have RCS. Can't use RCS. Just have fuel. Okay, come on, sail down. Okay. Now, I have to recalculate our air braking, so let me take a look at that. Actually, what we've got right now is pretty much exactly what we need. So, I'm not going to adjust it. We're going to come in at uh, 11,200. Okay, while it's doing this, I'm going to do some math. Uh, no, not do now. Let's focus back. Oh, come on. Okay, maybe I won't do math. <laughs> we need to be focused on this right now. I'm afraid to click too many things. Okay, no. No. Oh well. I need to know my total mass to be able to do the delta V calculation. So right now I'm a little bit uh, deprived of information here. But uh, we'll figure that out after the key maneuver here. Okay, going up again. Our orbit looks pretty close to our our companions there. 2.8 degrees off. We should be coming in on the inner orbit, closer to the planet. Now the question is whether this mission actually has to make the rendezvous first before landing or whether, and it's actually not making the rendezvous, the other mission is actually going to meet up with it, but um, or whether it can land and take off with the fuel that it's got and then only rendezvous with the other mission once it's back in orbit in order to get the fuel to return home. Right, because that's a huge difference. We don't want to be carrying extra fuel down to Duna with us if we don't need that fuel to uh, take off again. That's just going to be a waste. So I need to be able to calculate how much Delta V we actually have. And that means knowing my exact mass at this point. Okay. It seems to be pretty close. We've got uh, 2,700 meters per second of delta V. I know an ascent from Duna takes about 
uh, about uh, 1,200 to 1,500, depending on how you're doing it, um, depending on the thrust weight ratio and everything. But uh, yeah, I think, but we have to, well, we could let uh, Duna do most of the work for us, actually. Yeah. The question is whether I can... Uh, la now, we're doing a powered landing, and I know everybody says use parachutes on Duna, but uh, A, we didn't have the drag chutes, I think, and uh, B, wouldn't have a very good place to put them. We do have these parachutes, but I'm going to try a powered landing anyway for, for science, uh, you know, for uh, trying to figure out exactly how much it'll take. In fact, there aren't very good sources about that because everybody keeps using parachutes. Um, yeah, so, interesting. The problem is uh, we're going to be coming in on the dark side here. So maybe what we need to do, so I'm going to try it without, uh, without making the rendezvous first. And we'll see whether that works. So we probably shouldn't have boosted into uh, stable orbit in the first place, but so right, it'll give us buffer for the man mission because uh, whatever we do here, if it's successful, we'll want to try it with the man mission, and uh, any waste here means buffer there. Trying to finagle it so we don't have to land in the dark. Okay, let's see what we can do as far as science already. I think uh, we've already done good experiments around here. Let's check. Well, not for recovery, apparently. Let's keep that for now. That's interesting. Thought we would have done that already, but I guess not. Okay. We should send a lot more science over to Duna. Well, I think this should definitely bring us into a landing. But let me just make it more convincing. Now, we're at uh, the apoapsis end, so we should point prograde. That'll leave us retrograde on the other side. Oh, uh, before I do anything else, let's transfer some fuel into the center tank, huh? Always good to do that ahead of time. Obviously I didn't uh, add the fuel lines to this uh, because this design was made prior to me unlocking fuel lines and I forgot to add them. Okay, there we go. We still have, got, we still have the fuel in the other two tanks. But uh, there's not enough room to transfer them fully into this tank yet, so... Uh, landing gear, we'll leave in for now. Trick here is trying to figure out how far above the land we actually are, are but uh, we don't have any other way to check. We don't have the internal cockpit view of the radar altitude. And there's also a question how quickly we can decelerate. I'm getting a little bit nervous about that right now, so I'm going to feel free to take matters into my own hands. Oh fudge, 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 oh fudge. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh crud. Okay, so I clearly need some more Duna landing experience here. We'll have to do it a little bit more safely with the with the man mission. 
Ouch. On the bright side, that mission now has a lot more fuel in orbit. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's deal with that part of everything. All right, uh, back outside. You know, it's tough sometimes trying to figure out how high you are above the ground on Duna, but I'll uh, I'll be conservative now. So we'll grab the fuel first and fuel up completely and just do a much more powered landing with the crewed mission. But the first thing we need to do is get the other fuel extension in orbit. So that is what we're aiming for now. One of these fuel extensions is going to end up uh, being left behind in orbit around Duna, inevitably. Because we simply won't have enough fuel, uh, we, we don't have enough docking ports actually to bring it back. So we'll have to fetch it back some other way. Of course, uh, we are trying to make a completely reusable thing here, so so we will want to uh, bring it back somehow. Yeah, I'm sort of disappointed about that Duna thing, because well, that was just a just a casual oversight on my part, not landing it properly. Haven't practiced that in a very long time, landing on Duna. And, uh, well, you can look back, uh, try and find an episode where I landed on Duna, and that's the last time I've done it. <laughs> so, it's pretty easy for you to figure out how long it's been. Probably, uh, I, I don't know, did I do it on the in the Asteroid Defense series? I don't know. It might have been in my .23 series. So yeah, I'm uh, one one suggestion I have for the suggestion box is that we improve the Duna textures so that we can see how high we are. Uh, also, a radar altimeter would be nice. Actually, there's a mod that uh, changes it so that once you uh, see your surface speed down here, you know here it's orbit, right? But once it goes to surface speed, it automatically changes to a radar altimeter on the top. Uh, so that would be preferable. So just uh, whenever it's orbit, you can uh, give us our our sea uh, our altitude above sea level. But other than that, might as well just uh, have the radar altimeter up there. So matching inclinations with our existing mission again, because now it's not possible to exactly match it. And that's because of uh, where our periapsis is. But we can approximate and minimize the difference. Yeah, Duna always gets me like that. It always, it's always lulls me into a false sense of security with the altitude and then suddenly decides to uh, show me the terrain in the worst possible way. Okay, I think this is good enough for burn. It looks like we want around 12,500, maybe 12,800. Okay. RCS time. Oh. Maybe not from out here. Yeah. Okay, let's get closer in. Okay, that's about right. Okay, so we are in orbit, just need to adjust our orbit so that it is a safe orbit. Alright, so safe orbit. Now we've got two options as far as fuel transfers are concerned and it is time to take care of the the man mission. Always good to have that come in last. Milner Kerman, who we hope will not suffer any any fate like that of the Science Lander, had a nice leisurely trip and is coming in 16 days after everybody else. His approach needs some fixing, that's for sure. And zoom doesn't seem to be working quite right. 
Uh, I sense problems. 19 minutes, really? Oh, it's like that. Okay. Alright. Whoa, not good. Okay, that looks about right. Ooh. Don't get too close. Yep, that's as good as we need it. Now, again, checking the air braking altitude. This time it's uh, 12 kilometers. So you can see it varied in a range between, uh, let's say, uh, 10,500 and uh, 13 kilometers. Let's see about this whole red planet thing, right Milner? Too bad our other science didn't make it, but... But we still have an opportunity to grab some science here. Okay, retracting solar panels. Here we go. Milner is excited. I think it would be prudent to transfer the fuel into the center at this point, just in case. Oh, here goes Milner. And uh, he is going up again. Let's see the capture. There it is. Well, not really, actually. Here's Ike trying to uh, bend us in. Now we've actually gotten captured. Let's see, this one, we're at an uh, inclination of uh, 4 degrees off from it. I think it's probably the best bet for, uh, for a rendezvous, so we'll aim for this one. The other one's uh, looking a little bit further off. Oh, I should have, uh, let's see, what's our inclination difference? Ah, we're not in a very good position to fix that. Let's see. Okay. Well, we'll have the other mission do a mi more fine-tuned thing, but we're only five kilometers off there. Uh, probably we shouldn't uh, have done that because we need to balance out our orbit anyway. Uh, get the periapsis up. So I'll just bring it down further. Let's see. Then we'll probably be slowing down. Yeah. And that's close enough. We'll fix the rest with the other side of things. We'll just have the fuel extension do the do the docking with the RCS. Reminds me, I need to try one of those rescue missions, right? Haven't done that yet. Okay, point three seems fine. Ah, uh, but we've uh, accidentally brought our orbit quite far in. Oh, we'll be meeting up with that and uh, boosting back out again, so it'll be fine. We'll be matching speeds. Okay. Point seven. All right. Let's see, meet up with the target and take care of the of the velocity matching burn. It's better to do with this one because the ISP of this engine is better. I think this is, I don't know if this is lighter or not, it's probably actually heavier. But I just feel it's better to do with this one rather than that one. So this rendezvous is a little bit wasteful. We'll probably end up, it looks like, burning off about 200 meters per second.
okay with that we will allow the fuel extension to do the docking with us Okay, final phase of docking, all looking good. My spatial awareness seems to be with me today, hopefully. Well, except for, you know, judging the altitude above, above ground. But, uh, yep, okay, all docked up. And we can transfer fuel. Okay, fuel transfer simulator complete, and now I'm going to take a brief break, and then I'm going to bring Milner to the surface, or at least try to. Ah, uh, boy. Here we go. Okay, I'm back. I finished off my coffee and everything. Uh, took a little walk. Let's see if we can do this. First, uh, let's have this back away. Good. Now, Milner. Milner, Milner, Milner. We're going to try not to kill you. Uh, okay. Alright. Situation's not uh, quite as severe on in terms of lighting as the last time. We'll try a higher approach to give me more time to react to things. That should do. Ike peeking around from uh, from the horizon there. And all right, uh, here we go. We can close the docking port now. Yep, our, uh, our periapsis is running away from us, so that's good. Okay, so here we go again. Altogether, this is a much better approach than we had last time. Okay, I'd better start doing some of my own work on this. Aha! Tuna did not get me this time. Very close though. Still very deceptive. Okay, well good thing we did that other science lander otherwise Milner would have been a squished Kerbal at this point. Okay, I'm hoping that the jetpacks work okay around here otherwise uh, he's not going to be able to get back in this. But uh, for now, 
For now, yeah, he's landed. Uh, we'll take care of all the science stuff and then returning him back to Kerbin in the next episode. I don't think I can take care of that here. So, so uh, tune in next time to see what uh, Milner manages to bring back to Kerbin and to what extent this mission will be a success. And uh, probably another airplane, airplane adventure in the next episode as well. So uh, thank you for watching. This uh, has been an episode of Ups and Downs, but uh, we, uh, we finally managed to land on Duna, so that's good. Sure need a lot more practice with that. So again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.